This is my custom gravel bike and in this mini video series I will show you the entire building process. In this part I'm mounting hydraulic brakes and that turned out to be a disaster. What's up guys? What's up cycling fanatics? My name is Jasper and I make videos about bicycles including this custom build gravel bike that I built up over summer I and mean, this is a three-part mini series so if you haven't watched the first part check the link in the description or click up here somewhere uh, to, to view that first and I will show you what kind of parts I'm using and uh, I start up building this bike and I also set up the tubeless wheels and tires in the first part very cool and in this part I will continue on some of the parts that didn't fit in part one so i ordered some new parts i also ordered some tools and uh, i'm going to continue this bike build and guys if you want to see the complete building process of this bike and you don't want to miss anything please consider subscribing to the channel hit that little bell notification so you don't miss any videos in the future here we go so uh, after the first day of building uh, there were a few things i i could not continue with so I went online to, to see uh, what my options were, what parts I had to buy and maybe tools I needed. If you pay close attention, you can see that I actually have a headset in the frame right now. So I decided not to buy a headset press, which uh, was either not really available or very expensive. I only needed it once. So I went to a, a local bike mechanic and he pressed in the headset cups so i can now continue on the front fork which i'm very excited about because i can put in two wheels into the bike um, found a few things that might solve some of the issues first of all i needed a uh, a bleed kit so i bought a bleed kit to do the brakes i've never done hydraulic brakes before so we'll see how that's gonna work i have some uh, shifting inner cables and some shifting outer cables this is like 10 meters of outside uh, shifting cable in gold and I want to have gold accessories. This brings me to another, I wouldn't say issue, but it is a thing to think about because gold is not the same as gold. These are my hydraulic brake hoses. These are my shifting cables. You see what I mean? They're not the same color. So now i'm doubting if i'm going to use both of these or if i'm going to use the shifting cables in gold and then use the standard black hydraulic brake hoses i'm not sure yet the other problem was the brake calipers stand the standard flat mount ultegra 8000 hydraulic brake calipers they don't fit the flat mount frame I did find a uh, website, a company that makes adapters for this specific combination. However, they were 40 uh, Canadian dollars. It was in Canada, so I had to pay for shipping, probably um, import fees and all that stuff. So that would actually be pretty expensive. Uh, so I figured I'd buy mountain bike calipers. So right now I have the Shimano XT calipers, which are flat mount and they're going to fit the bike so then while I was talking to the designer of the frame I discovered I have another problem or issue or hurdle with the front derailleur this is a clamp on derailleur and in this derailleur which a lot of road bikes have nowadays the cable comes from the bottom however this bike is designed to work with a cable that comes from the top which a few years ago was fairly normal on cyclocross and mountain bikes but nowadays most bikes i think uh, have the cable from the bottom so this has a built-in cable stop so i can fit this shifting cable straight in into the front derailleur that's a good thing however it has to come from the bottom so i have to figure that out as well there is like pulleys that you can mount in the bottom and it turns around the direction of the shifting cable but i don't really want to make this any more complicated than it already is let's go so now that the headset cups are in place it's actually very easy to mount the front fork just start by applying some grease onto the bearings 
and then carefully placing the front fork from the bottom into the frame and then put the top bearings on that and then the ceiling cap. I used two spacers and then put the stem on top. I still had to cut down the front fork and install the top cap of the headset. So with the headset in, you can really see the difference in color. So we have the headset which is yellow gold and then this one is more like orangey gold where the shifting cables match perfectly with the headset. The brake hoses match perfectly with the seat post and the seat clamp and also with the bottom bracket. It's gonna be difficult. I'm either gonna use both and just mix it up or uh, I was hoping to get everything in the same color but I've, I've literally been searching for hours and hours online and it's impossible to find everything in the same color so concessions concessions now i have the fork in i can finally mount the handlebar i chose a carbon bar with a slight flare that you see a lot on gravel bikes these days the axle of the front fork has a little insert with a thread that has to be installed separately and is fixed with this super tiny little bolt Putting in the front wheel and the shifters would almost make it a rideable frame. In this stage I already tried to align the shifters how I wanted them to, to be but that was just a waste of time as you will see later in this video when I uh, would be bleeding the brakes etc. The front derailleur was a clamp on type that I bought separately because the group set came with a brace on type of front derailleur. Here are the mountain bike calipers that I bought to fit the post mounts on the frame. They come with a yellow piece of plastic in between the caliper pistons. I suggest you leave that in, in like what I'm doing now. You won't be able to fit the wheels just yet, but you'll need that bit of plastic in between to bleed the brakes. And it will actually save you time going back and forth. Anyway, it did allow me to actually mount the calipers with the wheels in. Which is more a mental thing maybe, because I, it will look good with the wheels in, but it's not very handy actually at all. At this stage I actually couldn't continue with the brakes, because the bleed kit I bought didn't fit the connection on the shifter. After some research I found out I needed another adapter to fit the bleeding kit onto the shifters. I wanted to continue this build, so I, I tried to do what I could and I started to lay out the shifting cables. I had decided to go for the yellow gold to fit the headset and then keep the standard black brake hoses, not to have the colors mismatch each other. I tried to get a ballpark of the cable length first. In this stage it's very important to leave them a little bit longer and definitely not shorter than you need. I used isolation tape to get the position correct and determined the length more carefully. In hindsight this would actually be easier to do after you put on the bar tape because then you will really know how long they will exactly be from the handlebar. In my case I actually trimmed them down again when the bike was almost done. Here I'm trying to figure out the length of the rear derailleur but I found out later that the cable stop on the R8000 derailleur actually doesn't move with the movement of the derailleur itself, unlike the 6800 derailleur I was used to on all my other bikes. So I could actually trim that down a lot later. I bought this oversized pulley wheel system, although the system was especially for my type derailleur, I couldn't get the locking bolt to go back in. I noticed there was a difference in the axle. Uh, it was solid on the replacement part instead of hollow on the original one. And that prevented it from going in far enough Hence, I couldn't get in that locking bolt. So unfortunately, I couldn't even use it. I'm using a golden KMC chain that would fit the color of the parts perfectly. Easily taking a few links off with this tool and then installing the quick link. And now we have a drivetrain. Opa! Oh, and even get all the I was very excited to set up the shifting. So I mounted the cables and started to adjust the derailleurs and the cable tension. It wasn't going all smooth straight away because I misrouted the chain through the derailleur. 
I noticed quickly and adjusted my mistake. Adjusting the high and the low screw on this derailleur is pretty much the same as the previous model. Unlike the front derailleur, which is completely different from the previous model. The design got way more complicated, but I think in terms of shifting, it is an improvement. I just read the manual before trying to align it and uh, I could do it perfectly fine. However, I, I would suggest actually leaving this step of tuning the derailleur to the very end. I ended up retuning the derailleurs over and over again because I also trimmed down the cable length a couple times. I could now finally start with the brakes. This is my first bike with disc brakes and I'd never worked on a bike with discs. And installing and bleeding disc brakes is something I had never done before. So I just tried to follow the manual as closely as I could, starting with mounting the brake hose onto the calipers using these required O-rings. Then I checked the clearance and determined the length of the hose to the front brake by turning the handlebar left and right. I taped the hose to the handlebar to check the length exactly and then cut them down with this special hydraulic hose clipping tool. Now I installed the connector pin. And no, you can't just push that in by hand. I used my workmate to clamp the hose in between these yellow adapter pieces. And I used a hammer to knock the connector pin in. So far so good, but this is where I started to make a very big mistake. I'm putting it in big red letters on the video here because this is not the way to do it. I had to install the hose and the olive, that's a little copper piece, into the shifter and then tighten it with the bolt. This would make everything seal. However, it's very important that the hose goes in straight, straight to the shifter and it goes in far enough. I thought I was following the manual and I thought I was doing okay, but I was not. I wasn't aware of the problem just yet, so I mounted the rear brake the same way as the front and I messed that up as well. In the meanwhile, I ordered this adapter piece to be able to use my bleeding tool. So both the funnel, the original Shimano funnel and the syringe from the bleeding kit now would fit onto the shifter. So now I could start bleeding the brakes, at least I thought so. You start off by taking the cap off the reservoir and then installing the bleed funnel. I read the Shimano manual first I, and I hung it up on the bike as a reference. Now we use the syringe to fill up the system from the bottom, pushing most of the air out through the system to the top. When the system is filling up, you'll see the oil coming up in the funnel on top of the shifter. I wanted to push another syringe of oil through the system to push out a little bit more air bubbles straight away. Before you put it on the caliper, it's important to not have any air in the hose. So I'm trying to get that last little bit of air out. And I just ended up squirting all this mineral oil like a couple meters up in the sky. And I felt super, super stupid and clumsy at this stage. I had oil everywhere. Any routine mechanic watching this would probably think I'm such an idiot. What the fuck? First time I'm doing this. It's a big mess. It's just, I watch a YouTube video and I have this instruction manual right here, but... Well, the clumsiness continued a bit more. Um, because I was doing this for the first time, it was more trial and error than actually knowing what I was doing. When the system is full, you can continue by uh, sucking the oil out at the bottom and tapping the hose in the caliper to make those little air bubbles come out. And I did this like five times, but it didn't really seem to work. And at that time, I found out that there was a leak in the shifter connection. Been trying for about an hour. Uh, turns out the connection of the hose to the shifter is leaking. So I can never bleed it like this. So I have to find out how to fix that first. But it's late, so I'm going to sleep and I'm gonna try another day. <laughs> I actually spent a lot more time that night figuring out what was wrong and how to fix it. And it turned out that the hose was not far enough into the shifter and that little copper olive 
was completely crushed by tightening the bolt because it was probably not aligned correctly. Remember I said that the hose needed to go in far enough and nice and straight? Well, I would recommend to either loosen up the shifters or take them off completely so you have some more room to work with. And this is why. But I ended up with two damaged hoses and more important, two messed up shifters with an olive that's completely destroyed and completely stuck inside that thread. And I tried a lot of different things like cutting the olive with a drill or with a cutting tool, picking it out, but you know, it all didn't work. At this stage, it really looked like a disaster. And I thought I had to buy two new shifters at about 200 euros a piece. No, God, please, no, 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 no. So I tried to get some advice through social media and people I know, but nobody could really tell me a solution. And I had one last resort. That was this gentleman, a metal worker and former tool builder for the aviation industry. He's a specialist in anything with metal, threads, custom made bolts, brackets, etc., etc. And if he couldn't get this out, nobody could. And my shifters were dead and I had to buy new ones. And he spent some time with a drill and with multiple tools. And eventually, you know, he got it done. He got out the little parts of that olive that were stuck in the thread. And it seemed like the shifters were back in business. I just had to find out if they were sealing and if they would hold up the pressure. I actually did the front brake off camera because I was so fed up. Dude, I was so happy. This mess I created seemed to finally be over and I could continue. So uh, after a lot of trouble, I got the, the left shifter to work from the front brake uh, last night. And uh, I'm now gonna install the other shifter and I hope it works as well. And then I can finally finish this bike. I first had to install another connecting pin because I had to cut off the end of the hose since it was damaged. Then I went on to mount the new olive and the connection bolt. I did this extra careful this time. First aligning the olive and the bolt, double checking, then checking how far it goes in, double checking again, and finally holding it nice and straight into the shifter applying pressure and then tightening the bolt. It's time to put the shifter on the bar and then fill up the system with oil. I filled the funnel and as I wanted to fill the syringe with oil, I noticed another problem. Okay, to the new light. I really thought this uh was gonna work out this time. Turns out now there is a little membrane leaking in the shifter. I think we damaged that while fixing the shifter and cleaning it with the uh, compressor. So, next challenge. Two weeks later. So after doing some more research, it turns out that there's a lot of different replacement parts for a shifter you can buy but not this one. I reached out to Shimano to double check it and they let me know that the oil reservoir cap and membrane was not part of their uh, items to be sold separately. So I would have to buy a new shifter after all, or I would find a donor shifter and then take the membrane off it and install it on my shifter. And luckily I, I found a damaged shifter online that I could use as a donor. I took off the reservoir cap. You can clearly see the damage on the old membrane. By the way, this is how the oil expansion reservoir looks from the inside, if you're interested in it, and something you would hopefully never would have to open up or uh, fix. I swapped this part out and checked to see if everything would seal. And yes, luckily it did. So I could finally start bleeding the rear brake. I used the Trivia bike stand to angle the bike backwards so that the rear chainstay and the brake hose was horizontal to have the air bubbles float up more easily. I went through the steps that I showed you before and then taking the last step to get the last possible 
little bit of air out of the caliper. This is done by pumping the brakes a few times till you really feel them getting hard. Then you hold the brake and you open and close the bleed nipple quickly. Any air that still remains inside the caliper would come out this way. You do this a couple times and the brakes should be all good to go. You take off the funnel and close down the system. Then I check the adjustment of the brake lever. There's two small adjustment screws that let you adjust the stroke and the reach. Here I'm installing the brake blocks of the rear wheel and the brakes worked. Just a final alignment of the caliper and there was a job done. Meanwhile, I got in some parts from, uh, from China, from AliExpress. Some bottle cages that I wanted to try out and a handful of golden titanium bolts and also a carbon seat post. I didn't like the orange gold seat post that I bought before. And in the first place, I tried to find a carbon post matching the Eastern handlebar, but I couldn't find the same series uh, available. So I went for the cheap Chinese option. It seemed to be a bit loose going into the seat tube. So I'm not sure, but I could tighten it well enough to, uh, to have a solid fit. And do I trust this seat post? Uh, I don't know, but I guess we'll find out. I screwed in all 15 titanium bolts, which looked very nice and were a very nice detail to this bike. I tried both bottle cages, but I wasn't sure which one I was gonna choose. While I was adjusting the shifter to the final position, little Sam came out to help after his nap. So uh, let's give this bike a first try. <sighs> continued to fit the shifter cables and ended up routing the rear shifting cable on the other side of the headset eventually and then trimming them down again. The carbon seat post that I bought was way too long and it hit one of the frame bolts preventing it from going in far enough so I had to cut that down. I didn't have tools for that so I bought a hacksaw and a pipe cutting guidance tool. The special carbon cutting blade went through the seat post like a hot knife through butter. Super, super easy. Now the next job was to cut down the front fork. I'm first marking it with a knife to have the exact length. And then you'll need about three millimeters of clearance to be able to tighten the headset down. So I measured that. And then I used some masking tape to mark the cut that I needed. The gap in the guidance tool was still quite wide, so I tried to guide the saw blade with my fingers, putting light pressure on the blade to keep it straight. Well, that didn't really work as well as I hoped and as nice and straight as the carbon seat post. And the cut was uh, pretty crooked for the first time. Unlike the carbon, I didn't go straight at all, so I made a second cut to get it nice and straight, and that worked out pretty good. I checked the cut with the stem, and it was nice and straight. And I used some sandpaper to take off the sharp edges, and it was ready to go back in the bike. The next challenge was the star nut. You can buy a special tool to hold the star nut in place while you hammer it inside the front fork. But a quick search online learned that I could make that part out of two ratchet sockets and a long bolt and some washers. This would allow to guide the star nut to go in straight as you hammer it down into the fork tube. It took me you know, a few tries to get it to go in straight, but eventually it worked out fine and it was in place nice and straight and in a good position. I was very happy with the look of this headset. So, 
Hydraulic brakes can be awesome, but they can be a pain in the butt to set up and to maintain. I hope you guys learned how not to do it and please don't make the same mistakes as I did. In the next part, I will finish this bike. I will continue with some small details and also I will show you one very important step you should take before taking your bike, your new bike with disc brakes out for the first ride. So go check it out, click up here to see the next part or find the link in the description. I'm gonna see you next time. See ya! Thank you.